this year. Well, I say, thank you, God. Thank you. Amen. Because God knows why. Amen. There's a reason why things happen. You know, let me tell you a short story in Acts chapter 27. We're not going to read this a long chapter. You know, Paul was a prisoner on the way to Rome. He was on a galleon, on a ship, on the way to Rome. And Roman soldiers were guarding him. He was a prisoner on the way to Caesar. Because he made an appeal to Caesar. Because the Jews arrested him. Uh, the Romans in Jerusalem arrested him for preaching the gospel. And so now he appealed to Caesar because he, he is an innocent person who was arrested, imprisoned, chained for the gospel. And so he is making an appeal for justice. Amen? But God is using this to bring the gospel to Caesar, to Rome, to the palace. <coughs> Ten minutes. Okay. So God is using the situation. Paul, a prisoner, God was using his imprisonment, his being in chains, to spread the gospel. That's why Paul said in Philippians, whatever happened to me, I thank God because whatever happened to me led to the furtherance, the spreading of the gospel. Hallelujah! Whatever happens to me now in the next two years will only lead to the spreading of the gospel to the world. Amen. Because remember, God called me to be an evangelist. Amen. Okay, you know what happened during the trip? Paul's, while the ship was navigating the ocean, they suffered a shipwreck. Storms, waves, strong winds crushed on that ship. Amen. And that ship was out of control. They could not control the ship. They tried to you know, get rid of the car car cargo. They dumped the cargo in the water to lighten the ship, but still they were at the mercy of the waves. They could not control the waves and the winds and the storm. But you know, brothers and sisters, God was in control of that ship. Amen! God was in control of that storm. You know what God was doing? God was bringing that ship to a small island called Malta. God wants Paul to, you know, this is something they did not plan. This was not part of the itinerary. Nobody planned. The captain did not plan for this. But God has a different plan. He will crush. He will sink that ship. Hallelujah. He will sink the ship. Because God wants Paul to get stranded in a small island for what, how many months? Six months? I think six months. Wow. Praise God. If I'm stranded in the Bahamas for six months, praise God. Hallelujah. If I get stranded in Samar for three months, praise God. Hallelujah. I will have fun. The greatest fun of my life will be there. Amen. And so God sank the ship and Paul survived you know before the ship sank they were all praying paul was praying lord save this ship save our lives bring us to our destination protect the ship protect our lives bring me safely to the emperor to caesar 
But God didn't hear. God didn't answer the prayers. Paul fasted. He did not eat for three days because he wanted to hear from God. And so during the night, he was fasting in prayer. Three days, God sent an angel, and the angel said, Do not be afraid. Paul, I have good news for you. Really? What's the good news? Well, first, this ship will go down. Hallelujah! This ship will sink. Amen. That's good news. And then the angel said, don't worry, there will be no loss of life. Everyone will be saved. God, you must run aground to a certain island. See, the angel said, you must run aground. You will get stranded in a certain island. And you know, once Paul was in that island, of course, they had to ship, they had to swim. The ship got stranded between two rocks. And they had to swim to shore. And you know, at that island, Paul performed one of the greatest miracles that his eyes saw in his entire life. Paul saw one of the greatest miracles in that island. He was bitten by a snake. And the native said, well, he's going to die now. But you know what? He did not die. So the islanders were amazed. They think, well, maybe this Paul is God. Maybe he is God because he did not die. And you know, Paul took the opportunity to preach the gospel to the villagers, to the natives. And Publius, like the mayor of that island, got saved. He got born again. There was a revival in that island. The natives believed in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And once his mission was done, Paul traveled again, boarded a new ship, and proceeded to Rome. Amen! You know what, how I would apply this to, my, to our situation in the church? I really believe God will sink our building! Can you say amen? Not only God will sink the building, He will demolish it. Do you know that building is already condemned to, to demolition in a few years? That building has served its purpose for since 2005 up to 2022. 17 years it has served its purpose. We no longer need it. God is saying, I will not only sink that, I will demolish it. And you will walk free, like how the Israelites left Egypt. They left their, they left their Pharaoh, their landlord. They left their landlord, Pharaoh. And when they left, they carried with them lots of gold and silver. So pray that when we leave our building, we will carry with us a, a lot of gold and silver. Pray for that. Amen. We don't need that building anymore. Amen. I really believe we will become a house church. I know, brothers and sisters, this mission is not for everyone. If you're looking for entertainment, church programs, I want to be entertained by a worship band. I want a church with lots of social affairs, you know, activities, events, programs. Well, this is not for you. No. This is my final calling. We are a mission society. We are to bring, God called us to finish a race, you know. I realized this morning that as I get older, I only have smaller, shorter, and shorter time to finish my mission. Yeah. Well, once I'm 62, 63, you know, I have a few, my time gets shorter and shorter. Therefore, I must concentrate on doing what God wants me to do. And if that, 
You know, if God wants me to retire as an evangelist, I will retire as an evangelist. So the mission society will continue maybe into my 70s. Just like Brother Patkey. We know the church will die. We know that. I cannot pastor into my 70s. I can't. Yes, that's the truth. But I can be like Brother Batty. I can be an evangelist up to 80 and people can still call me pastor. Right? The only difference is I am not an institutional, corporate, traditional pastor. Do you know what happened to Paul the last two years of his life? He was under house arrest. In Rome, they allowed him to live in a house. Instead of inside the, the prison, he was living in a house under house arrest and the Roman soldiers were guarding him. You know the story, Acts 28. For two years, Paul was under house arrest. People came to visit him. And the Bible says for two full years, he received anyone who went to his house who wanted to learn about the gospel, who was hungry for the truth. See, that's how I want to do my end time ministry. I want people who are hungry to come to me. That means if you are not hungry, we have no business with each other. Right? If you're not hungry for the word, if you don't, you don't want to learn from everything I'm teaching today, we have no business with each other. But if you want to get saved, I've been preaching the gospel every Sunday. Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. And so I am praying that once we are, once I am under house arrest here for two years, year 2023 and 24, bring your friends to my house. Anyone who is un hungry for the word. Maybe God will save them. If they're hungry, they're going to come. If not, they're just going to go to the mall. That's it. Amen. I believe God has a purpose. God will use my house for at least two years. Just like Paul. Amen. So what is my point? Thank God for everything. So, pa ba kayo? Don't, please, don't. This is the will of God. This is God's calling. This, is prophet, this was prophesied in 1989. I have maintained a building for 30 years. From 1991, 90, the 90s, up to 2022. I have maintained, the Lord has given us a building. From glad tidings to Tanduri Restaurant, which is now demolished. Uh, New Westminster. The Seventh-day Adventist Church, four buildings since 1991. That's it. That's it. It's done. We have served faithfully for 32 years. God closed the church. We must move on. This is a new calling now. You are my partners now in the gospel. Amen. We're not looking back. We're looking forward to what God will do. Amen. So there's a reason why we lost the building. There's also a reason why the church suffered a division. Because this type of calling is not attractive to everyone. Right? And remember, it is God who ordained this, not me. I am just following the Lord wherever He leads me. You know, God said to me, no, you still have a few years. It's not retirement yet. You know, in 2020, start of 2022, when, you know, when, once we learned that a lot of people are not coming back, my realtor already contacted me in February 2022. Do you want to sell your house now? This is the best time. I could have retired in February 2022. I could have got two million from my house. So I lost half a million now for because I did not take advantage of that. You know, I could have retired, but the Lord said, not yet. The captain, the Lord, the King of Kings, 
the captain of my salvation, said to me, not yet. You are stranded where you are right now. I'm going to sink the ship and you will be in your house. That's it. Acts 28. You know how I know that I'm, I, the Lord's will is not finished? Because my partners are still here. Can you imagine kung wala na rin kayo lahat? Matagal ko na inaalagaan niyo. Apo ko. Isang taon na. Amen. But because you're still here. Amen. We still have a mission. God said to me, oh, I really don't know what's going to happen in the future. I really don't know. I'm leaving it in God's hand. My greater concern is while the door is open, we have to push the gospel to the world. And you have, you know, pa Pastor Alvin, you are a pastor to your partners. Take good care of them. They are God's remnant. God's small group of remnant who will support you until the end. And some of you, Satan tried to destroy you. You made a confession that Satan almost poisoned your mind. Why are, why are you still here? Why am I still here? Because God is not finished. That's the only explanation. God is not finished. So get excited for 2023, brothers and sisters. We're going to see good times in 2023. We're going to have fun in 2023 doing the work of a missions society. I, I'm thankful to all my partners for listening, supporting me right until the end. We are called to do this. God bless you. Amen. So now